Next, let's, let's welcome Susan Aram from the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust. Thank God that wasn't a worse wardrobe malfunction, right? <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Two years ago, my husband and I were sitting on folding chairs in a dark little community hall in a tiny Iowa town, waiting for a farm auction to start. Next to us was Grant, a young farmer. And you can check with Severn, but I do believe this morning he's still single. <laughs> he had just taught us about growing organic fruit and nut trees and how he was going to incorporate small grass-fed livestock and how he'd never disturb the soil again. He'd convinced us that this auction for 40 acres or 105 or 145 acres total was the best chance he'd have of farming. And we were there to write the check out of our retirement fund to get him going. And by the way, we hadn't even heard of slow money yet. Behind us was a hefty group of older farmers who all seemed to know each other. With that crowd and corn prices driving land up over 10,000 an acre, we figured we'd get one bid on the 40 acres and we'd be out of there in five minutes. You see, Paul and I had moved back to Iowa to retire, and we saw the destruction unleashed all around us by industrial ag. You've heard it here already, environmental degradation, young people locked out of farming. We wanted to help rebuild the land and our community, so we figured getting a sustainable farmer on the land, growing good food, was one thing we could do. But we're not rich people. 40 acres seemed like an awful lot, and 145 off the charts. But as the auction progressed, we couldn't believe our ears. The price wasn't going up. The auctioneer looked like he was going to have a stroke. His face was all red, and that little you know, vein was about to pop. <laughs> he threatened to shut the auction down. Grant, he used to be a realtor, so he started pecking away at his calculator and flashing it at us, and he said we could buy the whole 145 for this price. We could put our money down, and he could cover the mortgage payments. Yeah. So we walked out of that auction entirely tapped out of our liquid assets. We had $700,000 of debt, and we're retired. <laughs> the annual mortgage payment on this was more than our annual income, just to put it in perspective. So, and we had literally bought the farm. <laughs> yeah. So, it was our dream, right? So part of the plan was to preserve this land to grow food even after Grant was done with it, okay? So I figured a couple of phone calls to some natural heritage groups and we'd be done. No, right. Dozens of phone calls around the state and around the country and I couldn't find anyone anywhere who would take a donated easement on a working farm in Iowa. And even if we could find a farm preservation group, we realized it would take Grant years to build up enough credit to buy it from us so we could roll our interest-free down payment over to a new, a new beginning farmer. And at our ages, we wouldn't make a dent before we croaked. So meanwhile, we were watching these developers um, paving over the best farmland in the world. That's where the Sustainable Iowa Land Trust came from. And yeah, we're taking back the word, sustainable. I've spent 30 years organizing workers and neighbors. I don't believe in duplicating effort, wasting time, or spending money I don't have. But I couldn't ignore what I now understood. The future of the Heartland's local food movement depends on our ability to preserve this farmland that's most threatened by development, and no one in Iowa is doing it. So we've pulled together the who's who of sustainable ag in Iowa. Some of you might know Denise O'Brien, founder of the Women, Food, and Ag Network, former president of the National Family Farm Coalition, or Fred Kirschman from Stone Barns in the Leopold Center. That's the caliber we're talking about, and we've got a couple of dozen of those as well as planners and policymakers from around the state of Iowa ready to support silt. We could fight developers if we wanted to, but whoever really wins that one. So we're going to work with them on this like they do in some other states. Let's put living, breathing grant wood prints in the middle of our developments while protecting them as farms forever. Let developers make their money off the view, but let our farmers grow, sell their produce out their back door. In the meantime, we're going to take the price of land out of the equation for sustainable farmers forever while still allowing them to gain equity in their homes, barns, and businesses. We face a lot of challenges in the ethanol and corn syrup capital of the world, but our farms will create growing green belts around our communities, making natural food-producing buffers between homes and industrial ag. In the land of the monocrop, our leaders are beginning to understand that diverse farming operations build resilience in our economy as well as in our environment. So here's the plan. We start with a major public launch in early 2015 to solicit farm donations because we know there are elderly Iowans out there looking for this solution. 
They just don't know we exist. We don't have time, we don't have a decade for them to hear about us by word of mouth. But we've already had our first farm committed, worth more than three quarters of a million dollars, by a 70-year-old woman who's still out there planting nut trees for the next generation, by the way. We've also soft circled two and a half million from four donors, and we're in discussions with other supporters. So if folks are donating their farms, and some people are at least talking about writing checks, what are we doing here, right? Well, silt leaders have spent their lives making this world a better place to live, eat, and grow. But they sure didn't make the millions we need right now. Iowa's elderly farmers are dying off as we speak. An endowment in place now will give farmland owners a safe place to donate their farms. With a first year operating budget in place now, we can launch an outreach campaign, push legislation for public funding, and hire the right experts for the job when the phone starts ringing. With enough support from you, we can assure landowners that SILT will be around to protect their farms forever. They must be able to trust us, and we must be able to do this right. Everything is in place except the money. Substantial support from you is the only way that's gonna happen soon enough. We might call ourselves slow money, but we're here today with an urgent plea. Help us save Iowa's farmland before it's paved over or plowed under by some industrial giant. Let us get the next generation of healthy food farmers on the land before it's too late. Thank you. Thank you.